Okay, hey, it's me, Destin. Uh, welcome back to the second channel. It's Eclipse time. Dr. Telepin's here. We're going to look at this tool that you've de developed for shadow bands. Correct. How are we doing this? So, with my one experience of seeing shadow bands in Africa in 2002, I still have a very distinct memory of how they looked and what their contrast was. And I realized if you're going to try to video them, you have to set up a video camera on manual mode or at least shutter priority the night before because it's too bright during the time of the eclipse to expose for the, the contrast of shadow bands. So what you're saying is shadow bands are so light that you can't really... You can't really tell how to set your camera. So during the day, it's a super light contrast event. Exactly right. And as the lighting changes, you will see that you can kind of get better contrast on the lighter colors. Okay. But in brilliant light, these are too blown out to set your your exposure on. Okay. Can he be in there? Yeah, he can totally be in All the right, video. Let's get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> so what I did is through a different a couple of different nights as I was doing testing. I took gray paint and I kept on diluting it with white, diluting it with white. And I first st stopped about there, but I realized that's way too dark for shadow bands. They're not going to be that dark. So then I did about another three and I tested one night and I realized that even that is too dark for shadow bands. So then I did another four. I think the contrast of shadow bands to set your camera up is gonna be right about here, very light gray. And the way to do it is to go outside at night, the day before the eclipse, and set up a camera to the proper exposure for this little area right here. Now when you say the night before the eclipse, you're talking about like now, it's like 10 minutes after right. sunset. About 10 or 15 minutes after sunset, when the sun goes over the horizon, will be about the lighting of 90 seconds before C2. Okay, got it. Because you cannot do this at 11 o'clock in the morning when the sun's overhead and this is blown out with sunlight. You'd never be able to set your camera for this exposure. Okay, so the night before, 10 minutes after sunset? 10 to 15 minutes. All right, and then come up with what you think is a super light contrast event. Get your manual exposure set so you can see a very fine variation in contrast. Exactly, between about these four. Yep. And then don't change your camera. Leave it that setting for the next day. So we're talking about aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Correct. Now, the other thing is you, you want to use a manual exposure and you want to use fast shutter speeds and you'd rather have an open aperture because you don't want your camera to have slow shutter speeds and the shadow bands get blurry because they move fast. So let's say that again. Fast shutter speeds fast because shutter they move speed. fast. And change your aperture to get the contrast you need. Got it, okay, so to summarize, you have the ability to change the contrast on your camper, camera by changing the aperture, the ISO, and the shutter speed. So prioritize a fast shutter speed and open up the aperture as wide as you can. Like if you can get F2.8 on your aperture, do that. Right. And then ISO. 400. 400, like just that. a guess. Yeah. Mess just, with it, see what you can do. Guess. You gotta mess with it. But you want a shutter speed of 250, 500, or a thousandth of a second. You, want, you don't want to be slower. When I was doing testing the other night on a video camera where I can do shutter priority, I think I'm gonna use 500th of a second. Awesome, that sounds good. That's it. Okay, that's how to capture shadow bands, or at least how to calibrate a camera in order to capture shadow brands. This is obviously not a refined color palette or anything like that, but it's the best shot you got. Also, you gotta set a white sheet up and orient towards north, right? That's exactly right. You wanna put this on a white sheet. I sent you a picture of it. Right. And you wanna put a piece of tape down the white sheet in the center, which is the axis of the path. Right. And then you want a video along the axis of the path in the direction that the shadow is going to go. So you want a video down the long sheet pointing towards the east. Have your camera on the west side, point towards the east down the sheet, and keep this, keep your palette in front of you so you can compare the contrast of, of the shadow bands later to what you came up with. Oh wow, so you can actually go back and post calibrate. And and yeah. And then you learn for the next one. Oh, that's cool, that's smart. Cool, there you go. That's how to capture shadow bands. Thank you very much. Dr. Telvin, thanks for your time. Good luck. Appreciate it. Luck. And uh, he created the uh, Eclipse, excuse me, the Solar Eclipse Timer app.
that I'm going to be using because you say in there exactly when to call out shadow bands. Exactly. Start your video camera at the shadow bands in three minutes mark, and then um, they should happen about 60 seconds before if you're going to see them. And then also 60 seconds and after 60 C3. 60 seconds after, exactly. This is the third time I've said goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>